Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly video for you on this particularly metal little guy, and I don't mean in the fact that it's metal, because it is metal, but um, more in its its style. This is the Wee Knives, Justin Lundqvist, Black Void Opus. That is the name of this knife, the Black Void Opus. I go back and forth as to whether that name is incredible or douchey or both, but the answer I keep coming up with is yes. Yes, it is. Okay, let's go on ahead and take it apart. In practice, super simple knife, right? There's a screw here and a screw here. Um, that's that's it. So hopefully it'll be very simple to take apart. Uh, one thing to note, the centering on this guy is terrible. That's because it is a chiseled ground blade, right? Uh, the, the centering is not a thing. Um, in fact, this is a very, very weird blade grind. I'll just show you this. See right here, reasonable. Right here, there's the grind. With a swedge on the other side. It's a chisel grind here with a strong swedge here. I want to carry this knife um, because I'm curious how it's actually going to perform. Holy threadlock of that, man. All right. Well, that's unpleasant. There's a fair amount of threadlock here. I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to use this wee hard driver set. Um, go ahead, check nickshabazz.com slash tools to get a better sense of exactly why and how. But um, I'm going to use this driver set here. This will give me a little bit more torque. So I can gently pop loose that thread locker. There we go. All it really took was a little bit more torque. But if I'm trying to do it like on this guy, I'm very likely to kind of like bend the thing and strip the screw. Whereas with that, it makes it very easy to apply a strong amount of torque. So I just went that route. Probably could have done it with this. Didn't want to, right? And then we'll go ahead and pop this out. Both of these are... Good Lord, man. This one's thread lock shut too. Uh, both of these are T8 screws. There was a little bit of a jump there, unfortunately. This is a very shallow screw. Not like it's only attracted to people for their looks, but there is very, very little contact surface on that torque screw. That's not good. That is really not good. Is the end of the world? No, but it just... The hell? Oh, okay, it's just a really long screw. Yeah. Uh, they really could have done better there. They could have made that a little deeper. Not a fan of that, but okay, now we've got all the pieces apart, so I can take this guy the rest of the way apart. Uh, let's go on ahead and use this spudger tool. And if you're curious about this or any other tool, I think I just said this, nickshabazz.com slash tools. But you know what? That's just going to be the meme for this video here. I'm just going to keep saying that periodically. That way, by the end of it, you know, and just in case anybody is actually curious about any of the tools I'm using in this or any other disassembly, they will know for this and any other disassembly that nickshabazz.com slash tools will help them out. All right. So what we see here is internal construction is pretty uninteresting. Actually, for some reason, this feels like an item, right? Um, they, 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 well, actually, not uninteresting. I mean, this part's uninteresting. This part's kind of cool. You got some texturing here, some scalloping. Um, in a lot of ways, this really does feel like a Elijah Isham. I'm not saying that in any kind of a demerit, by the way. I, I don't. I, it's a very original design. In fact, it's one of the more original designs um, I've seen in a while, which I appreciate. But... Um, and I very much appreciate Isham's work, but it kind of has that ethos, right? It's got a little bit of a cyberpunky thing. Except this might actually run on a console. Anyways, I digress. Uh, let's go on ahead and finish cleaning this bad boy up. There we go. Clean this up. Not thrilled about that pivot screw. Shallow screws are a thing. <laughs> Anyways, not making that joke at all. Um, yeah, moving on. Uh, so, Black Void Opus here, pretty straightforward. Um, ultimately, not a whole heck of a lot going on here in terms of it's a line of lock, um, which is cool. Um, yeah, uh, with kind of a subframey thing. Okay, let's go on ahead and maybe not a subframe. Anyways, let's go ahead and put this guy back together. Uh, step one is this assembles from the pivot side up. Okay, so I put down this washer. This washer serves as a bearing race. We can see actually that one side of this washer has already been um, mod, so to speak, by the bearings. So we know that is the side that faces away from the bearings. 
uh, I'm sorry, the, the side that is unmod faces away. We want that little race to be there because that race is, well, valuable, right? That'll uh, it'll run smoother once that race is kind of worn in. Have I gotten everything out of there? Yeah. All right, drop that on there. Next step, drop on the blade. Internal stop in there. No arguments. Go ahead, put a little bit of, uh, th uh, not thread lock. Uh, <laughs> do not put thread lock in there. 10 weight nano oil is my lubrication of choice for the day. Um, put a little 10 weight nano oil on the, um, the detent ball path as well as on the bearing race here. Beautiful, drop that on there. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Then I'm going to, actually, I'm not going to put the washer on there because the washer is safely ensconced right in here. So instead, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try and put that roughly in place. Is this shouldered? It is. What I mean by that is there is a little tiny ridge there on the outside. If that's not in alignment, this isn't going to want to snap back together. So uh, he says, knocking it out of alignment. Now, what I do is put the whole damn thing back together. Okay. Step one, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put in this back screw here. And I'm going to use some little, little bit of thread locker here. And my goal here is not to fully tighten this down, but just to get it in position enough that I don't have to worry about it coming loose again. Right? So there you go. Next step is going to be to... Oh, that ain't good. Okay, everything's all out of whack here, but that's because I don't have a pivot screw in there. Let's go on ahead and grab the pivot screw with its tooth thou of thread, or uh, I'm sorry, of uh, Torx depth. Hopefully now that there's not a bunch of thread locker uh, in there, it'll go in a little easier than it came out, but oof, that was not amazing. And this is a pretty sharp Torx bit too, so it's not like I'm... Okay, using a lot of force that way to close it up um, just to make sure it stays seated. Then I'll tighten this part down here too. Centering remains terrible, as we would expect for this grind. Oh, that's better. Ho, ho! <laughs> you know it's good when I go Mickey Mouse. Okay, that's smoother. That is 100% freaking smoother. That's nice. That's real nice. Okay. <laughs> we are good to go. All right, uh, so we have braved the thread locker. We have um, gotten through the, 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 the tiny thread depth screws. And we have uh, sung the Black Void Opus. Why do I believe that's a song? Eh, probably the metal connection. But at the very, very least, um, we are all now set. And we can move on to uh, the next disassembly. Or perhaps, as a better idea move on to the dinner. Hope this has been interesting to you and um, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your night. Bye now.